Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. A couple days ago, I put out a video on all the new features in Reaper 5.50, and there were a bunch of things that I had to cut out or I just missed completely. So in this video, we're gonna look at some more things that are new in this update. Let's start off with a new web remote layout. So I've got this going on my iPhone already, and here's how it looks. So this is the fancier layout, they call it. Up at the top, there's a little menu, it gives us undo and redo, toggle the metronome, toggle the grid, actually snapping to grid, and clearing clips. We have this great jog wheel, so we can just drag that. It's gonna show us in green how much further ahead we're going. When we let go, Reaper's transport is going to jump to that point. And if we drag it to the left, we get um, a red counter, and it's gonna show us how much time we're removing from the playhead cursor. We also have marker navigation. So we can tap that, and go to the next marker, jump ahead to bar 29, we can press this button, and it'll put in a marker there for us. Pretty sweet. So let's go back to the start, and we have our usual transport, stop, play, pause buttons, loop enable, record enable, and it'll show us how many tracks are armed. So let's just go to the start and press play. And you can see there's that green bar that shows the um, around the play button. It shows the current beat position. Really nice touch to uh, add that in. The master track, if we tap this, it'll bring up the master fader and also a hardware send. We can mute the hardware send so if we're away from our computer, we can tap that and it's gonna mute our speakers for us. And we can click on any track and get a volume fader for that track. So I am sitting at my computer just because I have to have this phone wired up to actually do the recording. But let's uh, look in the mixer and have a look at the track one here. Got it highlighted. I'm gonna drag on the phone to change that. It's a little choppy but close enough for, uh, you know, across the room or something like that. The web remote works over Wi-Fi, so anywhere inside your house or your uh, studio should work, anywhere you have Wi-Fi access. So it's, it's going over your local network. It's not going over the internet. No one else can uh, connect to it and mess you up, mess up your monitor mix, things like that. On these track controls, we also have record enable, of course, and once track is record enabled. Um, we have monitoring enabled as well. Not going to do that because I've got my microphone going in there. We'll hear it doubled in the recording. Uh, mute and solo on those tracks. So if I go to my resynth track, I can record enable that. It's already monitor enabled. I'm gonna hit my keyboard. And choose a level. So this is a great little sort of web app that we can use to record from across the room. So if we got our, our main system recording for us, we got this thing along with us in the vocal booth or behind the drum kit, we can start and stop playback. We can choose which tracks we're recording to and save us a lot of back and forth running across the room, things like that. So this is the, the new fancier layout. So let me go to the original layout looks like this, which is still pretty a nice layout. It still works very well. So tap on a track, like recent track, and then we've got our fader and all this stuff. You can duplicate the track. So there's a few features in each of the layouts that aren't in all of the layouts. So there's pros and cons of each one. So that's the new fancier web layout and inside Reaper, Let's see how to connect that. So you go to the preferences, all the way down to the bottom, control OSC web, um, add in a web interface, control surface mode, web browser interface. You choose a port. It's gonna be something like 8080. You can uh, give a username and password if you want. You don't need to because it's, you know, it's not public. It's only on your local Wi-Fi. You know, if you have a lot of systems running at the same time, um, maybe you'd want to put in a password. I don't think it's necessary. 
Default interfaces navigate to the page in your web browser. What page is it going to default to? You can get to any of these just by typing in uh, fancier.html or lyrics.html. Uh, just when you go to your uh, access URL here, which one are you going to get? So I have mine on index, but you can choose the new one fancier if you want. So I'm going to cancel and I'll show you my other options. So this is the one I already have set up. So my ID is epic. I just type in rc.reaper.fm slash epic, and it's going to do all the configuration for me. So uh, that saves a bit of time there. So that's the new web layout. Pretty cool, pretty easy to use. Now I'm going to show you this new addition to the Spectral Hold plugin. This was first introduced many updates ago, probably about a year ago, um, and it's it's this plugin that sort of sustains whatever you put into it. So I've got recent here. I'm going to cord enable that, and I'll unbypass this plugin. I'm also going to add in Reverbate just to get some more stereo width to this. And I'm just going to play around with controls here. The new features are the mix in on update and auto update every number of seconds option. I like a really, really short number for this auto update. 0 0.001 sounds pretty good to me. And we can also choose smaller FFT sizes, and that's going to reduce the latency. It's going to reduce the kind of sampling size that it uses to make that smearing effect. So we're not going to get as rich of a harmonic structure for that sustained sound, but it doesn't mean it's not going to be interesting or useful. So let's jump down a couple steps to uh, 2048. So now it's updating every 2.45 seconds, which is quite a long time, really. So I'm going to put this on 0 0.002. Let's go down to the smallest size, which is going to be the most sort of grainy. Let's go up a couple octaves on the keyboard. And go down a couple octaves. So as I said, interesting, kind of useful sounds. It's just a fun sort of sound design plugin. Uh, you never know what you're going to get with it. It's not super intuitive, but it's fun to play with. You get interesting sounds. Uh, so that is the new update to the Spectral Hold plugin. A new plugin was added in this update called 
Recast. And this is a Shoutcast uh, server or Icecast server plugin. And basically it gets your audio out of Reaper and onto the internet uh, through real-time live streaming. I honestly have no idea how it works and I can't find any information on it. Uh, but apparently it's been around for a few years. I just I can't really find any uh, good information on how to set it up. But if I do find out, I will do a video. So uh, if you have any information, please let me know. So moving on, let's look at uh, export and import configuration options. There are a few new options here. So when we export configuration, this list used to end at language packs. Now we have Media Explorer databases, web interface pages, automation items, and MIDI node names. So if you're using this export option, definitely check those. You want to export as many things as possible just to be complete with uh, preserving everything here. And as well, once you have those things in your configuration, you can import them to your new system, to someone else's system, and all those things will be brought in with it. Let's go back to working with automation items. I did spend quite a lot of time in the video on automation items, but I didn't cover everything. So uh, the first thing is what happens when you have two overlapping automation items? So we've got this one with a long ramp on this EQ going down to uh, 32 hertz. Now I've got this spiky one here, triangle wave. Uh, what happens when we drag one over the other? The automation items automatically get out of the way of each other. They can be layered. And both of these items are controlling the same parameter. So keep that in mind. The actual parameters are going to be uh, as if they were in series. Let's look at that EQ to see what the actual curve looks like. So let's move this out of the way. This one starts here at 1100 hertz. Just a smooth curve like that. This one here is this quick spiky thing. And when we layer them, looks like this, where this one basically defines the minimum value that this other one can move. So it's not something you need to do, but it's something that might be useful um, as a way of modifying something that you've already written in there. You might be able to see here that this is a looped automation item. The actual pattern is only goes to here. And if we wanted that to decrease over time, this is one way we can accomplish that. If we want to move these items together, we can shift click them or command click them control on the PC to select them both at the same time, very much like selecting items, uh, audio items. So we can click and drag to move those around. So we're moving both automation items at the same time. Copy those, and go to, let's say this other tracks volume automation, and we paste them. They both come together because they were both selected at the same time. If we have the items separated in time, uh, we can copy them and go over here somewhere else in the track, hit paste, and they both come along with it. If they're both selected, we can change their size like this. So they're both getting longer or shorter. And we can both stretch them by holding down Alt, grabbing one of the edges. Now they're both going to stretch together. Uh, and that works when they're overlapped as well. We'll just move these together, select them both, alt drag, and they're both uh, stretching or extending, shrinking. Pretty basic audio editing sort of uh, workflow there, but just want to make sure that everyone knows about those things that you can do with it. I don't think I showed what happens when you delete an automation item. You actually have two options. So we can delete, and that's just going to clear it and put it back to the default value. And if there was automation there already, it's going to uh, show that. So let's undo that, move that out of the way. I'll just draw in some random automation. And I'll put this automation item over top like that. 
Now, if I delete it, it's going to bring back that original automation that was there. And I can do delete automation preserving points. And now this is going to replace what was there. So that's deleting preserving the points or not. If we have these items stacked again and I glue them, and very similar to gluing um, MIDI items or audio items, these are going to connect together. So gluing combines those two levels that were in the automation item and uh, puts them all into one item. But it doesn't affect any envelopes that were underneath. So let's say we want to reuse this automation item in another project or elsewhere in the project. We might not want to copy and paste it right now, that sort of thing. We can actually save and load automation items. So if we right click, click on save, it's going to bring up our automation items folder inside of the Reaper folder. Because the item is named number eight, we haven't customized it in, in the automation item properties. Uh, it's going to default to the name or the number of the item. So eight is fine. We can go elsewhere in this track or another track. Just for demonstration, let's go to this other track and we'll bring up the pan envelope and we'll put our cursor where we want this to go. We'll right click, go to automation item, click on load and we'll choose number eight. And there is that automation item brought in again into the pan envelope on a different track. Automation items, they don't really care what the original parameters were. It's just going to save the values of the points. And there you go. That's all the stuff that I forgot to show you in this update. Uh, 5.50 is just a huge update. There's so many things, uh, automation items and spectral editing and uh, all these other little things. Just a fantastic update. Coco's really did a great job with this one. And that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.